Welcome back to part two of the building of the rudder for my Sharpie sailboat I designed. I'm also doing some fairing on the boat, but I'll cover that in another video. I want to weigh the rudder guys. Have a guess and go to the end of the video to find out how close you were. Because I had to make those repairs because of the um, air pockets, I'm adding another layer of uni halfway down and another layer of 400 gram biaxial over the whole thing. Going for the chemical bond instead of using peel ply, quite a bit of it ended up down on there. It's about 20 degrees Celsius, 65 Fahrenheit, and it's late in the day so I didn't have the air problem coming out of the timber because it's already glassed. There was only one little spot where there was a bubble. That's the template I'll use. I use the same process on the dagger board. It help, really helped the profile if you have quite a wide template. Put some sandpaper on the inside, slide it up and down. So today I'm making a template and I'm starting the fairing process. I just finished making the sanding template and as you can see down this end here it's actually quite close fitting already which is a fine thing there's not a lot of filler to go on not on this side anyway good Sunday morning the work on the rudder on this side went really well yesterday I'll do the other side today it's a bit of a mess and I'm not cleaning it up till I finish this woodwork which to a large degree is pretty much all the woodwork done for the project and I I'm not sorry to say that because the timber around here has been I think contributing to my allergies so <laughs> that's quite a milestone achieved Before I get too carried away, I've got to start off with some reference points, so I'm straightening up the um, leading edge, just making it flatter this time, and the widest part, and the trailing edge, which is quite critical to get right, right from the beginning, it's only going to end up about a millimetre, so I've got to keep it up so that I don't um, over bear it in certain areas. It's going to be a painstaking process, um, but better this way to take it down slowly and carefully than overdo it and have to fill again. The other thing is, um, the bottom already is a little bit more narrow, the widest part than the 
top. So before I even make up my templates, I'm seeing how I'm going to work with that. I don't mind that too much. It's going <clears> to <throat> slide up and down on the rudder stock. As long as it works well on the rudder stock and doesn't get too loose and it's raised up a bit. There's never as much filler there as you hope for and I ran out of the 417 onto a bit of a mix of a lower density and a little bit of glue fibre in with that. You know that sound you hear in the middle of the night and you don't know what it is? I don't know how this guy got in. An unwelcome visitor in the house. What a mess. No animals harmed in the making of this video. It's not finished of course, but good to see I'm under the weight that I estimated. It's Thursday morning and I was hoping to get a coat of paint on one side at least by the end of the day. I'll give it a go and see how it goes. Wabi-sabi, it's a Japanese word for seeing the beauty in imperfection. It's not perfect, but for me it's absolutely good enough. Uh, and most important for me was that it's pretty close to a proper NACA profile. Trailing edges end up a little bit thicker than I was hoping for, or planning for, but that's okay because it's going to have a clamp to clamp it into the stock that comes up against this edge. So um, it can't be too delicate, Sedge. Uh, what's left to do Bef after lunch? It's lunchtime now, so I will get to paint one side of it at least today. There are ways I could possibly paint both sides, but I'd probably have to spray it when it's hanging to do that. And with this paint, I haven't been having a lot of great success with um, spraying it, probably because I haven't probably got quite the right gear. So what's left to do before painting? Um, it's just two holes here. I've got the coordinates and I've got the bushings in there. So all I need is drilling really. But that's for the, some line will go through here. That'll be the lifting handle. I'll probably put the first coat on and then put wet on wet. I'll put another coat on within a very short period of time. And I'm going to roll it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to roll it. This, this is the kind of paint where you finish it off with wet and dry. Oh yeah, yesterday I went and picked up the trailer. I had to sit outside their building and um, put the wheels on <laughs> and the tow ball jockey wheel. I had to put them all on before I could tow it home. I was pretty excited to do that of course. And it worked out a bit cheaper than I thought it was going to. It was about 1600 New Zealand dollars. I won't be putting it under the boat yet because um, in the process of fairing the decks and I don't want them too high off the ground so I can reach them but yeah what do you think guys I, I really like it it's turned out very well I like the color look at how much glass is in the top there that's like about three millimeters Another reason for rolling it is um, it fills the pinholes so much better than spraying. When you're spraying it, it seems really thick, but rolling it, it seems really thin. I can't see any pinholes happening which is a very fine thing. I've just been weed eating before the place turns into a jungle. Only a couple of hours worth. And this Duropox paint has cracked off really well. Tomorrow I'll flip it over and do the other side. The fairing on the boat is 
started. That might be the subject of the video next week. For the rudder, the headstock, I've been thinking of casting it. What do you think about that guys? It'd be quite a big casting. Probably my biggest, over 4 kgs. I haven't quite calculated it. <clears throat> or I might laminate it up out of carbon fibre. I think I've got enough. Give me your thoughts. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you next week.